After three years of uh, printing, we were arrested by the police. Prison under the communist regime, very tough. I can say hell. We don't know when we can get out this this place. I am Father Gregory, and now I'm the parish priest of the Church of Our Lady Star of the Sea in Singapore. I was born in Cambodia from a Vietnamese family because of my dad was working in a French company in Cambodia. And I spent all my childhood in Cambodia. I go to church almost every day in the early morning with my brothers and sisters, 4.30 a.m. I study in a brother La Salle school. I think my parents, they could not afford to help me, to allow me to make further education. And almost at the age of 15, one of the brother, Lasalle, approached me. Do you want to go to the seminary? I say, why not? Because to go to the seminary at that time is free to study. So the following years, especially my mom, she could not believe it because, frankly speaking, I was very naughty boy, if we can say that. But the reality happened because uh, the parish priest invited my parents to come and told them that I'm going to the seminary. They were very happy because especially my dad, he was actually, he was in the minor seminary, but because of uh, my grandpa family situation, so he, he had to leave the seminary. So now I, I continue his ways, actually. And especially, not only my parents, my grandpa, he is really a pious man. He go to the church every morning. He was so happy and he told me, grandson, I wish one day you can bless my coffin. When I heard this, really, a kind of support, a kind of encouragement for me to enter the seminary. And the war, the war happened in Cambodia. This is the last year of the minor seminary, but I had to leave with my parents to go back to Vietnam. I continue my last year because uh, in Cambodia, we study in French language. The only seminary in Vietnam, in Dalat, this is the only seminary that continue the French language. So I was there for the last year. After my baccalaureate in French, my bishop sent me to a village. This is really a very remote village. And there, he asked me to go there to work, sure, to live a Vietnamese parish priest. And he asked me, you go there and, and learn their language. Uh, so I told the parish priest, uh, Father, the bishop asked me to, to learn the language. This is the, they call Bna, totally different from the Vietnamese. And the parish priest looked at me and said, how long you can be here? I, I don't know. The bishop uh, told me that, okay, if the bishop said that, uh, you, you learn, you learn. You look at me, I lived here for five years already, and yet uh, my language is not, but I tell you, uh, not easy, okay? 
So the following day, he asked a catechist of the of the village to to teach me the mana. After three weeks, yeah, almost three weeks, I started to speak this language. He looked at me. You were born here, I say. But because of the Bna and the Cambodian, uh, the same root, if we can say that, the same family. So somehow, thank God, I, I, I learned the Bna quite, quite easily, quite easily. And I stayed there for almost one year, and especially the, the people there, the tribal people, they. They loved me very much, and they adopted me as the son of the village. But unfortunately, during this time, the Vietnam War, and this is the, the the place that very, very dangerous to live, because in the evening, people don't live in their village; they go out on the road, uh, on the road to sleep overnight over there. They call it Viet Cong. Uh, the, the Vietnamese uh, we call uh, the communists. Ah, uh, the communists uh, from the north. They arrest people. They bring people to the, the jungle. But on the road, the national military they keep uh, they keep the, the we call it the security. So that the people go on the road and sleep. And then the following morning, they go back to the village. The first is in Cambodia. Now in Vietnam, the Vietnam War. So we, the whole, the whole village, all, everyone have to leave because this is, this is a really a remote place. You cannot stay there. And from there, sure, again, I cannot continue uh, my stage, my my work. With these people, because they moved to another place, and the bishop at that time he would like me to be with him, because uh, there are many incidents, many people injured during the Vietnam War, so we have to stay there to to take care of them, to bring them to the hospital, to bury them because uh, some die because of the bombs. So I stay there. They call uh, the 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 fire summer, uh, the fire summer because of the the war very tough during that time. So after the second year of my stage of my work, the bishop sent me to the major seminary in the central of Vietnam. They call Da Nang at that time, and that time this seminary very crowded. Uh, because it is for six dioceses, 400 seminarians together there, and I was there for three years. Again, another another war broke out, and this one very very tough. 1975, all of us go back home. The major seminary closed, and went home. Sure, as a, a major seminarian. A brother, so I continue to help the parish as catechist, as a choir master, and meanwhile, I work to help my parents, to help my family, to help my brothers and sisters as a trishaw driver. You can imagine, very tough. I had no choice. Because as a seminarian, as a brother, a Catholic religious brother, uh, that time the communist uh, regime they did not allow us to do anything except the freelance uh, work as a, a trishaw driver, almost uh, six years, five years plus. So during that time, our bishop asked four of us to print. Sure, discreetly, underground, song books, prayer books for the diocese because the communist regime they confiscated all our books 
I'm sure this do is illegally, but nothing secret in this world. After three years of printing, we were arrested by the police. Prison under the communist regime, very tough. I can say hell. And we were sent in the prison, they call it Qihua Prison in Ho Chi Minh City, hell on earth. Because first, the food we have sure twice a day, lunch and dinner. But we don't know what is lunch, what is dinner, because the inside is very dark. Just a small light, just a small light. And we notice that this meal, and after some hours, that meal, and we know this meal is lunch and this one is dinner. And this one meal, we call it, yeah, uh, nowadays we call it nasi biryani, yeah, yellow rice. Yellow rice, but because of the good, good rice, but the, uh, almost uh, uh, spoiling rice already, yeah. And then we have to eat, we have to eat it to survive. And rice with soup. Soup, that we call it ocean soup, because it's just salted water. But what to do? Yes, this is the meal. I still remember inside. And one day, one day, the cell opposite threw to me a small candy, a sweet. And I sucked it for two weeks, for two weeks. Delicious, actually. Every day, they give us a cup of water. You survive with this cup of water, you drink and you clean yourself. Sorry to say, toilet, you have a bucket. You don't have a toilet paper. You don't have a toilet paper. And this one, you keep inside your cell. This is the cell around five meter, square meter, five square meter. And then you keep one corner, one week, they allow you to throw away. Nothing to do, you play with the ants. You play with the ants. And the night, because of the situation, we, we heard many people roar. They, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. They, they, they just cry, they cry the whole oh. Because we stay there, we don't know when we can get out of this, this place. This is the, the, the torture. To mark how many days you are inside, you don't know. So each day, after two meals, I mark one draft. I mark on the wall once, one straight. And then six plus one, seven, that's been one week. Four weeks, one month. They don't need to torture us, but the life is a torture. Even we as major seminarian, but we could not understand why we work for the church. We obey the bishop. And now we are here in the, we call the hell. I broke out. Beat the wall, beat the door, cry out. Lord, you are not my, my Lord. You are not my God. If you are my God, you cannot allow such a thing happen to me. I was there for three years, for three years. And then they, they brought us out. Yeah. Sure, I, I said, each one, one cell separately. They brought us out to the court and they charge us for inciting people against the government. It's political. Uh, sure, uh, this is very tough. This is very tough under the communist regime. And we said, no, 
we did something illegally, yes, we accepted, we printed out uh, prayer books, song books for the church, nothing against the government. And then they, they, they told us, look, you created a prayer against the government. Wow, which one? And they bring it out, the Our Father prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Uh, because the time the government give pension, give food to the people. But we say, no, no, no. We did uh, print illegally, sure. Uh, the prayer book, nothing else, no political, not inside people against the government because under the communism, the, the, against the government, very tough, very tough, very tough. And one day, almost one year, almost one year later, I received from my parents a can, a can of food, but uh, they call a uh, cha, that means uh, uh, pickles, uh, pickles, and inside, deep inside. Later on, I when I left uh, the prison, I came out. I asked my mom. She she wrapped the hose, the hose inside many layers of plastic, a black one, and deep inside the pickle can. I didn't know, so I ate it slowly, slowly. At least um, two weeks later, I reached the, the, this part of layer of plastic, <sighs> and I opened. Oh God, the host, Jesus is there. I cry, I cry, I cry. Even now you come to stay with me in this place, in this hell. And from that day, I feel very peaceful. I feel very, I don't say happy, but calm down, I can say that because God is there with me. And then sure, the time for me now, at least there is someone there with me. And then sure, I, I, I can say, I converse with Jesus. So the end, they don't have any reason to charge us. After three years, we are released from the prison. So after three years in prison, we went home, but we stuck another prison because every week we had to go to the police station to report what did we do, who did we meet, and sometimes they came to our, our house to check where were us. So the end, our bishop told us, now the situation is this, four of you had the police station sentence. So I don't know when you can continue your seminary when I can ordain you in this situation. So I, I suggest two choices for you. One is you stay here, we wait. I don't know until when. The other choice, you leave Vietnam as one of the both people. If God bless you, you reach the third country and you continue the seminary, you will be ordained, thanks be to God. You choose. So four of us, Three my my friends, three of my friends, they say, no, we stay here because to, to live as one of the boat people, very dangerous, very dangerous. First, the police. You have to escape the police. The second, when you are overseas, you encounter a typhoon or you encounter the pirates. So I was thinking, thinking and pray so at the end, I told my parents, I live as one of the boat people. And sure, we don't have uh, uh, the means. So the bishop gave me the means to pay the trip. I went. Sure, because uh, we are in the south of Vietnam. Normally, we live 
from the south to go to the south, to Malaysia, to Indonesia, to Thailand. But this, this way very dangerous and long way also in the sea. I chose to go to the north, to China, and long the China's coast to go to Hong Kong. And this one long, but somehow safe for a little bit. So I left, I left my parents' house. Only my parents knew, even my siblings, they didn't know. I left and went to the north. I was waiting for the boat three months because it's not easy to find the, the way to go. Uh, a wooden boat, not long, just around nine, 10 meters. And then 23 of us in this boat, and we left Vietnam. On the way from Vietnam to Hong Kong, 39 days, 39 days at sea, you can imagine. And sure, we had to eat, we had to, to drink. So, very tough. Many times, we have to jump to the sea to, to, to get some shell, to set some, something to, to cook and to, to eat. And normally, we eat porridge. And one day, almost reached Hong Kong, almost reached Hong Kong, I, I had in my, my thought, in my head, to say, Lord, to follow you is so tough. Once I reach, once I reach Hong Kong, I will leave. I will leave you. I don't want to follow. I don't want to become a priest. Suddenly, suddenly, the typhoon came. All of us omitted, and then the, the, the body almost sank down. So I, oh God, only me is a Catholic on the boat. Maybe because of my, my sin, of my, my bad thought to leave you. Please show me the sign. I will follow you. Five minutes later, the typhoon come down. So I think, this is the sign. Lord, I will follow you. You know that I'm not good. I'm bad guy. But you, you have chosen me. I promise you, I try my best. So I reached Hong Kong after 39 days and stay in the refugee camp for six months. And then after six months, I go out to stay with one of the, uh, the French priests. The French priest, meanwhile, to wait for, for the, the, the paper to go to France. And then I reached France for two years because I, I, in Vietnam, I, I was in the same major seminary. And the last two years so that I could not because of the Vietnam War, I went to the major seminary for two years and was ordained after 26 years as a seminarian. 26 years since I came inside the minor seminary to the days, to the year that I was ordained. 26 years, exactly. My mom and my dad, this is a really, this is the best present that uh, they receive because when I, I received the, the diaconate, diaconate, that means six months before being ordained as a priest, we try to get the, the visa, the paper, for them to go to France to attend my ordination. But in Vietnam, sh 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 thank God, the last minute, through the intercession of uh, the, we call the ambassador of the France in Vietnam. They flew from Vietnam to France, reached there two hours before my ordination. Yeah. And then the bishop come down and hugged them, and we cry, we cry. I 
Actually, when I was ordained, I didn't know where I was sent. The only thing that my superior asked me, where do you would like to go? In my mind that time, at least Hong Kong and Taiwan. China cannot, but at least Hong Kong and Taiwan. But when after the mass, my superior say, Gregory, we send you to Singapore. People clap hand, but uh, I don't know where is Singapore. I never heard about Singapore at that time, uh, 30 years ago. Uh, uh, some people ask me after the mass, where Singapore? I don't know. They say maybe in Africa. I don't know. And then when I, I came here, Twenty-nine years of priesthood, I can tell you frankly from my heart, I never regret to be a priest. Sure, there is difficulties in my ways, but with the grace of God, so far until today, I thank God for choosing me to be His priest. Turn back towards God. Rise up. <laughs>